Hello cheapskaters, welcome back to my kitchen. I have a recipe for you today. I've been meaning to get it up for you for ages. It's one of those recipes that caught my attention. It's been everywhere, all over the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. It's been absolutely everywhere. The name is what got me, Depression Era Salad. Now I know at the moment it's really good big to um, try living on rations, to live, you know, use depression era recipes, follow their hints and tips, that sort of thing. And that's really good. I'm all for that too. I love to know how people in the past lived. But this salad, I'm pretty sure it wasn't called depression era salad in 1933 or 34 or 35 or 36 or 37 I'm pretty sure it had another name so I went looking and I found the other name for it it's called Jew salad like I tell you guys don't just when you search for things and always do your own research when you go searching for things don't just take whatever comes up on the first page of your search engine dig deep I had to dig back a long way. I went back eight pages. <laughs> That's a lot of links to be clicking. I, was, I went down a rabbit hole of determined to find out the history or the origin of this salad. I wanted to know, was it a recipe truly from the depression or was it just a recipe someone had come up with and given the name depression era salad because that's, trending number one at the moment I went back I went back eight pages I finally found a YouTube video not a blog post or a TikTok or an Instagram or Facebook post or anything else a YouTube video from seven years ago and I yes this guy this guy makes sense this I think is truly a Jew salad or a depression era salad. He was able to show, had an image of the handwritten notes that came from his friend's grandmother who worked for a Jewish family during the depression and this is the salad she would make for them. Do I think it's a budget friendly salad? Not especially unless you grow most of your own veggies. Otherwise, it can be quite expensive. But do I think it's good? Yes, it is just delicious. And it is one of those salads that really appeals to me because, as you know, I like to prep for the week ahead on a Monday. I can do this salad on a Monday, put it in the fridge, and we're still eating it, or the last of it, on Sunday, and it is still delicious. So let's get started. I've jumped the gun a bit. Let me just tip you down. I've jumped the gun a bit. As you know, I like to do things in real time. And that means, of course, that I do all the peeling and chopping and stuff with you. Well, this time, there was a lot of peeling and chopping and stuff. And really, you don't need to see 20 minutes of that. So I'll do the most of it with you. What? I did forget to get out my main tool that I'm going to use today and that's my V slicer. I know lots of people are scared of these. I can't say I've ever cut myself on it but I do have a healthy respect for it and I treat it carefully when I am using it. Okay, that's it. That's my slicer. There we go. That's my slicer. That's the do the wiki. All right, now this makes a lot, so I'm also going to get out my pasta pot. Because it will be filled. You can't quite see all that, can you? Let me just move you around so you can. It's a bit better, isn't it? Yep. Better. There we go. Ah, right. Cabbage. 
This is one reason why I don't think it's a particularly budget friendly recipe if you have to buy the veggies. Cabbage at the moment is very expensive. The original recipe said about a kilo. I'm going to do about a half of this half because that's well, maybe I might do a bit more. I'll see how it feels. All right, so and I'm just going to grate it straight into the pot. Can you see what I'm doing? Do I need to lift it up just a wee bit and tip you around just a little more? Okay. Right, I've taken off all the ugly outer leaves. So let's go. I have to say, this slicer does slice nicely. I'm in the habit of... No, it has to go across the top. In the habit of using it. Oh, that's going to drive you nuts, isn't it? Sorry, it's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. Because it just makes slicing really quick. Slicing finely and shredding really, really quick. Now, there are gloves you can buy. The chain, um, chain mesh gloves that you can buy to protect your hands. Just be really careful. Like I said, I've never cut myself, but I am a tad on the careful side, keeping my fingers well up out of the way. This is a squeaky clean cabbage. Can you hear it squeaking? be able to pop it down in there. That's better. Slicing it through does it really nicely and finely. I do cabbage for coleslaw like this. And cabbage for chow mein like this, for soups, because it just does it nicely and finely. And keeping an eye on where that core is, because we don't really want the core. It's not that nice to eat. And can go the compost. it makes a lot now I don't have we'll keep those for something else I don't have gallon jars or half gallon jars the largest preserving jar I have is a quart so I use my um, Le Parfait jars because they come with a screw top lid and I just put them in the fridge, in the door of the fridge. Okay. Yeah. Getting a bit small. So let's see, wrong thing. Let's see if we can use that here. Okay. There we go. Just it's a bit of a safety. Nope, that's not gonna work. So it might have, because it is getting down there. Anyway. If nothing else, your arms get a good workout with this. Now, like I said, this cabbage was quite expensive. The cabbage, the cabbage was expensive. It was $3 for the half. So I don't have any in the garden. Um, so that automatically puts the salad starting at $3. Then we've got three carrots. 
So that's another 60 cents, $3.60. Half a bunch of celery is $1.25. So that's $4.85. Chop those with a knife. Um, two cucumbers. Uh, they were three for two dollars, so it's a dollar forty. Um, a red onion, a green onion, and a capsicum, a green capsicum. So there's some great flavours in it, but very much um, unless you're growing your own. Not necessarily a cheap salad, which again, I wonder if during the Depression all these veggies weren't cheap or did they all, you know, people that made this salad, did they grow their veggies? Because I can't imagine that people would have had the money to um, buy all these veggies during the depression. I'm pretty sure it got only got the name Depression Era Salad once and it was picked up on because oh, really the original name's not overly politically correct, is it? Um, I'll put a link to the blog where I found it underneath for you. You can have a look at the handwritten recipe itself. about a week in the fridge with a simple simple dressing that I haven't changed I haven't modified the dressing at all because it works um, if you want to fiddle around with it feel free but it works and I figure if it's working it's not going to need to be changed. Okay, I'm going to save that because I honestly think we have enough cabbage. Still got to get the carrots in. So carrots, three carrots it says. So I'll use three. Give it a nice colour. I'm just slicing it into rings thinly. I've got my slicer on the thinnest setting. Um, I want everything to be thin and about the same thickness. been doing now. You can quite easily grow the ingredients for this salad in your vegetable garden. Cabbage is easy to grow, carrots are easy to grow, celery is easy to grow, onions easy to grow, capsicum is easy to grow. It's slow like celery. Cucumbers of course grow like weeds so they're easy to grow. All right. Last little carrot. The sweetness of the red onion 
and then the brown onion together works really well but if you don't have one of each use two brown onions use two red onions use a white onion a salad onion if you have them I didn't. Okay, I it and run to the celery. This might take a while. Celery is a bit, it's a half a bunch to do, so I will bring you back when I've done the celery. Okay, I got carried away. So I finished the veggies, but you can see there's celery underneath, red onion, uh, cucumber, capsicum, and white onion. Now you know why I wanted to make it in my pasta pot, because it makes a lot. Before we start stirring this through, I want to get the dressing started. Now the dressing is simple. It's boiling water. Let me get my sugar canister over because yes, there's sugar in it. I make it the way the recipe states it works for us. I've not played around with it because I don't need to play around with it. But count with me because you'll probably die at the amount of sugar. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The recipe and the video that I watched are. Uh, doing i don't really know what i'm doing what am i doing I'm trying to put the lid back on this video that i watched said between 10 and 12 tablespoons of sugar that is a lot of sugar but there's a lot of salad so into some hot water and just give it a stir firstly to cool the water down but to dissolve the sugar too The water will go clear when the sugar is dissolved. Easy as that. And then it's um, vegetable oil, white vinegar, garlic, and I'll get the salt out. It hasn't quite dissolved. There's still some on the bottom. It just works better if you can get the sugar all dissolved before you add the oil. done. Come on, dissolve. It's not that hard a life sugar. Just melt. Alrighty. Okay, where's my spoon rest? Where's my spoon rest? Okay, okay. Got my Easter spoon rest out because it's Easter. Okay, now we need to add oil and vinegar it is one cup of vegetable oil i'm just using plain ordinary vegetable oil because that's what was in the cupboard i have used olive oil in the past it's a little bit heavy or strong perhaps is a better word i said one cup didn't i vegetable oil just to make sure because i don't want to wreck it one cup of vegetable oil Use the vegetable oil of your liking because if you're the one that's got to eat it, you might prefer a sunflower oil or a safflower oil or um, canola. I don't use canola, but anyway, so whisking the oil and water together to try and get it to emulsify. It does take a bit, but it will. Slightly thicken. And the oil and water will, will combine. And I like to do this before I add the vinegar. Okay, 
and then we've got one and a half cups of white vinegar. Oh, so I thought I'd get out the big bottle rather than using my little one, my little pantry decanter. So we go one into the trusty apple green Tupperware measuring cup. And uh -huh. there we go. Where did I put the lid? So I don't put the lid on it right away, it will go over and I'll have a big vinegar mess. And I'll do the same thing with the oil. About a half a cup. Whisk it up. Then we've got two tablespoons of garlic powder. This is the only garlic powder I have and it's not really a powder, it's very fine granules, but it works. Two tablespoons. And I'll get the salt out because I forgot the salt. A tablespoon of salt. I'm not a fan of salt. I don't really like salt and I rarely use it, but for this, it works. I'm just using cooking salt, non-iodized cooking salt. There we go. Whisk it all up. Uh -huh. Smells rather nice. It's a bit of a vinaigrette, I suppose, a version of a vinaigrette. Dear. can't believe I did that. I can wear eating it. Okay. Now comes the fun part. Stirring of the ingredients. Use your hands. Wash them. I won't bother drying them because they're going straight in here. Get in and start mixing stuff around because you want all those pretty colours to combine before you put the dressing on because we're going to pack it into jars. So start by mixing the top layer and gradually getting down into the bottom layer. It's messy. If I had a bigger pot, I'd use the bigger pot, but I don't have a bigger pot. So let's do it. Lift and fold. Lift and fold. That's it. Getting stirred through. This is the biggest pot I've got, I think, other than my candy pot and it's out in the shed. In we go. Lifting the cabbage up at the bottom, dragging it up, twisting it through. It's sort of like a big coleslaw. Um, with a couple of extra ingredients, isn't it, really? And I guess if you went looking for a pickled coleslaw, this might, something similar to this would come up. But now you know why I wear an apron, because I am a messy cook. Now I'm breaking out the onion. So it's going to go in clumps. The red onion's broken up. It's the white onion that wasn't. We'll take out that bit of cabbage core because we don't really want to eat that. Cucumber. Okay. Right. OK, 
Okay, picking up the bits that I've splashed all over the bench. Let's pour this dressing on. Swish it. Get out the garlic. Okay, and it's back in with the hands. Because we want everything to be covered with some of the dressing. slices of onion that haven't fallen apart yet pop them out make sure everything's evenly distributed as evenly as it can be okay you will have um some dressing at the bottom get rid of this use my funnel because I want to try and keep the rim of the jar clean so yes it's going to be a bit of a challenge to fill the jar but we will manage pack it down that's another secret to pack it down don't leave it loose so pack it nice and tight there we go do in a minute I come along with a glass and pack it down some more now one of these jars quart jar does us for usually tea and lunch the next day if someone's having salad for lunch so you can see that easily can last. You know, I've made a mess on the bench, but that's all right. Put it in. Okay, still combining as we get to the bottom of the pot. pretty salad with the colors the greens the light green the dark green the white of the cucumber the orange of the carrot the pink of the red onion there we go Just enough for tea tonight. In fact, I think it will be a perfect amount for tea tonight. We're having um, burgers for tea tonight, so there will be burgers with depression salad on the top. Okay. All right. Let me get rid of these. Now. I will take out this because we're going to stew the bowl again because we'll eat this for tea tonight with our burgers. And there will be plenty of dressing on it so I won't need to add more. Now 
Now, surprisingly, if this lasts till Sunday, it will be better on Sunday than it will be tonight. Okay. All I'm going to do now is take my jars and there's a little bit of dressing left. So let me start down here and I am just going to add a bit to each jar. I will pack them down again. little bits pack them in that's it put the lids on which I didn't get out but I will need to get them out put the lids on that's your depression era salad it goes into the fridge that's what we're having for dinner tonight I'll show you so how easy is that to get a week's worth of salad this goes really well on its own as a salad with a, to a side of meat or chicken or fish it's really nice on salad rolls so if you add put this put a slice of lettuce down then put just the stop with bread going soggy put some of this slice of tomato a bit of cheese if you've got beetroot put beetroot on it delicious salad bun no meat needed it's really good that was it depression era salad I don't know why it's called that other than the real name is sort of politically incorrect perhaps um, let me tip you up without getting too oily <laughs> I don't want to get my greasy fingers all over the camera I'll put a link to the original YouTube video below i've put a link to the recipe with all the quantities and everything on our website below too try it i'm sure you'll enjoy it it is really good even if it does have a strange name okay thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far i do appreciate it if you're not already subscribed to my channel i would absolutely be honored if you click the subscribe button and then the little bell next to it. The little bell just notifies you when I upload a video or when I go live. And if you've got any questions in the comments below, I read every comment. If there's a question, I do my best to answer them. If it's in all capitals, that really helps because they stand out then and I know it's a question. I'll be back very soon with another video from my kitchen. Until then, happy cheapskatings, folks.